Oh yeah, here we go on this epic journey through calculus. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Let's roll. So first things first, what is this first lesson all about? Well, basically, I'm going to attempt in a few videos to go over all of calculus with you in just a few, like I said, videos. That's crazy, right? Well, the basics we're going to learn in these first few videos are going to carry throughout the more complex stuff we're going to cover. And it's going to make, I hope, concepts down the road easier. So let's jump to it. So basically, the title says it all. It says all of calculus is d equals rt, or as I affectionately call it, dirt. Basically, distance equals rate times time. So how? Let's dive. Before today, you dabbled in the mathematical world of change. So what that means is you've dealt with the math of slopes, whether it's of a line or a parabola that has changing slopes or maybe a square root function or all kinds of polynomials, right? All other kinds of functions. Well, we're going to now dive into the world of math that is used to describe, explain, and calculate, and predict all the things that change in this world. So that might be how fast a stock goes up or down in price, or how fast a space shuttle accelerates or slows down. Uh, it might be how fast blood pumps through a typical human's body. There are so many things in this world, it's hard pressed for us to find something that doesn't change, right? So many things change, and calculus is all about the math of these changing things. I'm psyched. So informally speaking, we are basically diving into playing with slopes. That's it. So let's go into a couple word problems that will nicely encapsulate all of calculus. All right, let's roll. So first things first. We've got two algebra questions that we're going to dive into. And again, they get into the essence of calculus. And it's all about, as I mentioned before, distance equals rate times time. So let's talk about a couple of key words that you might think about when we think about distance and rate and what they are. Well, rate, R, is how fast you travel. Time is, well, the amount of time that goes by. And the distance is how far you've traveled. Now, we're going to get into another word displacement. If you've never heard of that before, I'm going to explain it in a little bit. We're also going to use a word, velocity. The velocity is how fast something travels and in what direction. So it gives you direction and speed. So without any further ado, let's dive into this problem. It says a car drives an average velocity of 40 miles per hour for two hours in one direction. Okay. Well, before I even read the rest of the problem, I can use those numbers. Let's just calculate what we've got. We've got the displacement, assuming the car is traveling in one direction, the displacement and the distance are the same. And displacement is the ending position, where you are at the end, minus where you started. So in money, if you ended up saving $200 and you started with $20, you save $200 minus $20 over that time span, or $180. So displacement is the change in position. And that would be equal to the velocity, how fast we're traveling, which is 40 miles an hour, times the amount of time, which was two hours. And 40 times two, of course, simple, 80. Now, what are the units? Well, 40 was in miles per hour. The two was in hours. Said that right here in the word problem. And so the hours divide out, and you're left with miles. So it's very simple. Now, what does this look like, though? And what are we actually being asked? Because we haven't gotten to the question yet. If the car's starting position is at mile marker 5, what is its ending position after two hours? OK, let's get a picture of what's going on here, shall we? So basically, you're traveling on a road. Let's assume, just for simplicity, that we're traveling in one direction. So we start out at mile marker 5. Right? There's a mile marker on the side of the road. And we travel for 80 miles. OK, if we're traveling for 80 miles, let's have a little arrow showing us going in one direction like that. And I'm going to put a little 80 on top of here to represent that we've gone 80 miles. So where do we end? Well, let's think about this. If we start at mile marker 5, and we add on to that how much we've changed, that's the displacement. So the starting amount plus the amount we change equals our ending amount. It's a pretty simple idea, but very important in calculus. That's going to be equal to 85 miles. Very simple. So that's our final answer, mile marker 85. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, peeps. The importance of this, I'm going to come back to again and again later on throughout this course. All right, let's look at the second problem. A car drives 100 miles in one direction 
for four hours. What is the car's average velocity? Again, average velocity is how fast the car is traveling and in what direction. We're assuming it's going in one direction here. So again, we use distance or displacement in this case, it's the same, equals rate times time. So the distance in this case is 100 miles, and that is equal to the rate. We don't know the rate, so we leave that as a variable. Times the time. We've been traveling for four hours, or horas in a terribly spoken Spanish. Horas, maybe? All right, so that is equal to four. So you've got this equation that we're left to solve. We're just going to divide both sides by four. Simple. 100 divided by four is equal to 25. And if we're wondering, what are the units? That's not so hard. Take a look back at the problem. We had 100 miles, so I'm going to put miles right here, over four hours. Sweet. That's miles per hour, right? So 25 miles per hour. And this makes sense, or you've done problems like this before. If you travel 100 miles for four hours, you're traveling 100 miles divided by those four hours to get the amount at which you're traveling per hour, the velocity, the average velocity over all that time. And that's it, peeps. That's it for this little mini lesson. More on that in the next video for sure. I'll see you there.